Hi, welcome back to our continued video series with New Century Planning Associates. I'm here with Bob and Lewis. Guys, great to see you today. To see you. What a topic we have to talk about. RMDs, required minimum distributions. Bob, a lot of confusion out there right now for pre-retirees and retirees. What would you say to them to kind of put them at ease? Well, I don't know if we can. It's, it can be a confusing, quirky topic. Uh, all three letters mean a lot, required and minimum and distributions. Uh, they can sneak up on you. We do have some good news that Lou will share with us about that, but uh, they have big impacts. If you end up accumulating a lot of money in tax deferred accounts, these required distributions come into play whether you want the money or need the money or not. The government says we've waited long enough on the tax deferred front. They come knocking and you've got to take some, some moolah shmula out. Because Uncle Sam will not be denied, right? He's a partner in our retirement. But Lewis, Correct. you're saying there's some good news here. There's some optimism. Yes, there's some good news because the government has uh, prolonged the uh, waiting time. Uh, it used to be 72 when you had to take those RMDs. Now you can afford to wait until 73. So that's a little bit of a reprieve. Question, it was 70 and a half, right? It was 70 and a half, then they moved it to 72, then they moved it to 73, and we're amazed because the government needs revenues, so why are they pushing this out? But I, we think we know why they did that. Well, let's discuss that for a minute, because I think that's important. You guys have your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the retirement planning world, and curious minds want to know, Bob. Curious minds want to know. Well, you know, the government giveth and taketh away, so yes. it sounds great. Oh, we're out to 73. Here's the bad news, and it's, it can be bad news. Now, when, when somebody left money to a child, grandchild, niece, nephew in their 50s, that person had all their life to take their distributions out, right? Could that be. is called a stretch IRA. And we lost the stretch IRA. That's Correct. the bad news. So they could stretch it for decades. Now, under the new rules, most people, other than a spouse, are going to have to take all the money out in 10 years. And so if those people who are receiving the money are making good money themselves and they have to add a substantial amount of money over 10 years, right, if, you know, uh, you know a, big, a big amount over 10 years, uh, they could pay a ton of taxes, For 30, example, 40, 50 percent. If, yeah, if the uh, child who inherited that IRA was in a certain tax bracket, then if he receives a distribu if he receives another IRA, an inherited IRA on top of that, that may push him into a higher tax bracket. And we think tax brackets are heading higher down the road as well. So this could be a real nightmare for somebody who's accumulated a lot of money in the so-called bucket two tax deferred world and leaves it all to their loved ones. Wow, could have a terrible tax impact. So, so what you're telling me is they shouldn't run out and go to the Maserati dealership when this happens and spend their money there. Clearly, this is an opportunity. <laughs> a couple things to think about first, right? To speak with an advisor. And one of the things that we talk about through this entire video series is we're going to give out a ton of great information. Some people will process it and make good decisions on their own. But at the end of the day, it is important to see a financial advisor about that. And I'm gonna tell everyone, hey, listen, when you come and see Bob and Lewis and the entire team, I've been to your office. What a great team you have. No pressure, no obligation. Just get your questions answered, right? Lewis, you're gonna say something. The rules are so quirky and so crazy that an ordinary person really should go to an advisor because otherwise he'd go crazy trying to figure out all those rules. Here's an example of quirky. Think, think how crazy this is. When you reach that age, 73 now, if you have 10 or 12 IRAs, the government doesn't care which one you take it from. As long as you do the math right, you meet the deadline, which is December 31st, you could take it from this one. I have cash over here. I don't want to disturb my Apple stock over here, but you ready for this? If you have two or three or four old 401k accounts, you have to take an RMD from each of them. How would you know that? That's what we mean by quirky. Different rules for different plans. So it makes the case for consolidation. We usually try yes. to get people roll that stuff over to IRAs. It's much easier. So let me go one step further here, Bob, because this is a big point. There are significant penalties if you do not do this correctly. And that alone is a reason to consolidate, see an advisor, make it simple. The highest penalties in the tax code are the ones associated with RMDs. So Period. Uncle Sam's very serious about yeah. getting their R&D money. Well, not to defend the government ever, but from their standpoint, they may have waited 30 or 40 years to tax this money. So when it does happen, they're pretty serious. And to be polite, uh, if you have you know, multiple accounts in your early 70s, that may be different than in your early 90s, right? So you don't want to forget that's the, the case for consolidation can be made, I think, pretty clearly. So let me, let me, let's go one step further because taxes affect everyone in retirement. And, and maybe there's a time, there's no other time in life where you can have some control as to how you're going to be taxed in retirement 
When it comes to RMDs, what do I need to be aware of, Bob, to make sure that maybe there's some tax-free income or I, I'm, I'm at least ensuring that I'm not overpaying the government? So we're big advocates of trying to reduce or even eliminate RMDs from the picture because they're so quirky and messy. If you have substantial RMDs, that can make your tax bracket higher, your state tax higher, your Social Security, your Medicare premiums has a lot of effects, can mess up legacy plans, a lot of taxes. So to the extent possible, we advocate using a QLAC. Uh, using uh, Roth conversions over time. There are ways to mitigate and possibly even eliminate Correct. RMDs in the future. So easier said than done, a little painful, but smart. Yeah, the key is to obviously plan, meet with your financial advisor, hopefully us, and uh, we will lay out a plan where we can minimize the distributions, minimize taxes over the long term. QLAC, <laughs> Q-L-A-C, what does that stand for, Bob? Qualified Longevity Annuity Contract. And I know we're part of our video series. We're going to talk about that in depth. But from the standpoint of RMDs, can you tell everybody how that possibly fits into the equation? Well, the QLAC is not used a lot yet. A lot of people aren't even aware of it. It's fairly new. In fact, some advisors, a lot of advisors aren't even aware of QLACs. QLAC to us is like a painless Roth conversion in the sense that the QLAC allows you to eliminate uh, up to $200,000 in your, in your tax-deferred world from the RMD calculation for many years, so it, it can help. Lewis, any final thoughts for retirees and pre-retirees on the whole world of RMDs? Well, some final thoughts are, this is a very, very complicated area. Uh, professionals uh, don't even know some of the nuances and quirks, so I would say please come and see us. Uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions and look into them, and um, that's it. It's really, really complicated, so come and see us. Lewis, Bob, thanks so much. If you want more information about this topic or anything else we spoke about here today, hey, give us a call in the office and let the great people at New Century Planning Associates help you retire well.